Dear Diary, I don't know if you've been watching my rallies recently. Well, you haven't been watching my rallies, Dear Diary, you're still just a book. But anyone reading this in the future, in which case I guess my rallies won't be recent anymore. But what I mean is rallies that are contemporaneously recent to the time at which I wrote this diary entry. This is getting needlessly complicated, but anyone reading this is probably interested enough in me that they've watched all my rallies on YouTube or Rumble or whatever the future equivalent of those things is. Probably still YouTube because that thing is a juggernaut. But I guess if Elon buys it, it might collapse like Twitter is doing right now. And if I were to buy YouTube, it would be bankrupt in less than a year, guaranteed. But, uh, but what was I talking about? Come on, Trump, weave, damn it, weave. Oh yeah, my recent rallies. The fake news media have been saying a ton of stuff about my recent rallies, and I thought I'd address some of their commentary. Should I explain what the fake news media is? Because when people are reading this, sometime in the future, the fake news media might be gone, like extinct or something. In fact, if I win in 25 days' time, holy shit, 25 days, is that it? Oh, Christ, now I'm freaking out about that. That's the last thing I need. Come on, Trump, calm down. You've got your contingency plans all in place. And it's almost a full four months until January 6th. That's like a lifetime away, especially in politics. Uh, yeah, but I'm weaving, I'm weaving. And uh, yeah, when I win this election, I'll make the fake news media extinct. I'll do it myself. I hate those guys and the women. Ah, I'll revoke their broadcast licenses so fast it'll make their cameras spin. They'll spin like a dog. All their fancy fact-checking and interviews and questions and fact-checking. Who needs them? So quick explainer, the fake news media, what everybody used to just call the news media until they started criticizing the world's favorite president, me, Trump. The first president of, I think, anywhere to habitually refer to themselves in the third person like a boss. Yeah, that Trump is a boss. But you know, I've read Mein Kampf and I've talked with a bunch of people, dictators, mostly people who Trump now calls friends, buddies, what the English call chums. So I've talked with these tyrants on a regular basis, sometimes on the phone, sometimes in bed, often at our weekly poker game. And they say that the key to getting into power is to destroy the public trust in previously trusted institutions. So the news media, the justice system, the opposing political party, Walmart, Target, stuff like that. When I learned about that, I got straight on it. The news media became the fake news media. The justice system became packed with crooked, corrupt judges, malicious prosecutors, meddling clerks, meddling mall rats, all that stuff. And that was an easy one to squeeze into conversation because I've spent so much time in court over the last few years. So when you hear the term fake news media, it harks back to an age from your future perspective, whoever is reading this, when the news wasn't state-run and controlled by a megalomaniacal dictator, yours truly, and they would like investigate and tell the public stuff that the ruler didn't want them to hear. That probably sounds quaint and archaic to you, future person. So weave, weave, weave my recent rallies. What have the crooked, corrupt, fake news media been saying about my rallies? They've been saying that they're becoming increasingly low-energy events. I resent that accusation because I always make sure that I'm hopped up on Adderall before I go on stage. If my rallies are coming across as low energy, that's not my fault. It's obviously a faulty batch of Adderall. Maybe they mixed up my batch with some placebo or something. Besides, I go on stage and I weave my weave for an hour or two far beyond the point of boredom for the audience. And they say my rallies are low energy. Do they have any idea how exhausting it is to stand there and talk for two hours? You have to be an endurance athlete or a, uh, well, like a teacher, I guess. So no, my rallies are not low energy. Don't believe the fake news media and especially don't believe your own lying eyes and ears. They will deceive you. Not to mention the fact that when I'm talking, I'm actually awake through the entire speech. It's not like when I was in court and I'd fall asleep every five minutes. But on those days, I wasn't taking my Adderall in the morning because I honestly couldn't care less about being awake in court while all that boring bullshit was going on. Sometimes narcolepsy is a blessing. But the fake news media have also been saying that my rallies are becoming increasingly angry. I dispute that allegation. I've always been a pissed off piece of shit. That's why my kids call me pops. What's really happening is that I can't be bothered to beat around the bush anymore. 
For example, as recently as a few months back, I was calling my enemies low IQ individuals. But now I'm just coming straight out and saying my enemies are morons. And I've been working up to this for literally years. You can see with another example, you look at my first few rallies in 2015, 2016, I never cursed. Not once. But I'm a foul-mouthed, black-hearted, vicious, venomous turd. So I started sneaking in a few hells here and there. When the audience got used to that, I started squeaking in a few bullshits. I'm at the point now where the crowd goes wild when I say bullshit. Those buck dopes just love it. So I figure, what have I got to lose? Cut the crap and talk the same language as those poisonous, rage-filled idiots. I tell you, if the fake news media thinks I'm angry now, they're going to shit themselves when they hear me talking after the election. Doesn't matter whether I win or lose, I'm just going to cut loose. If I lose, I'm going to be more pissed than I've ever been about anything in my whole life. But if I win, nothing will be able to stop me. Not the Congress, not the Supreme Court, not even Chuck Norris, nothing. And if I'm unstoppable, I can say whatever the fuck I want. I suppose it's true that I'm becoming angry. Yeah, I'll give them that. But if your whole life was falling apart, the walls were closing in, you were losing all your money, losing all your support, losing in the polls, losing on the stock market, losing in all the courts, where well, you'd be getting angrier too. Others have said it, but I'll say it here and claim it was my idea. My future is either the White House or the Big House. And that prison door is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Or maybe it's getting closer and closer and closer. I honestly can't tell the difference. Because when I call someone else a moron, it's just projection. Same as every other insult I hurl at people. What else do they say about my rallies? Well, they say I ramble, which I've addressed before, had mausoleum. I don't know what that means, but using Spanish makes you sound cleverer than you really are. It's not rambling, it's genius. I know it sounds identical to the incessant stream of consciousness verbal diarrhea that comes out of your demented uncle with Alzheimer's, but it's not. And you know it's not because I'm doing it. And when I do it, it's pure genius. It's the weave, see? Weave, weave, weave all day long. It's just what I do. The funny thing is, if I were weaving a rug or a tapestry or like, I don't know, a poncho or something, I'd be actually producing something, something worthwhile. But my weave is even more special because it produces nothing. Its only product, if you want to call it that, is irritation and rage and taking some of that precious, precious oxygen that people are always going on about and turning it into beautiful, noxious, environmentalist, enraging carbon dioxide. And you know that in my case, it's not Alzheimer's or dementia or whatever, because I don't have verbal diarrhea. I do have the regular kind, like all the time. That's why I live in diapers and frequently vent other environmentalists enraging gases into the air, like, uh, let me find it. Somebody wrote it down for me. Like methamphetamine and uh, hydrogen peroxide. Oh, no, wait, that's my shopping list. Let me just, uh, here it is. Like methane and uh, hydrogen sulfide. Hey, look at that. I produce hydrogen something or other. Maybe that means I could make some of those newfangled cars I keep talking about. I could sell them and I could be the primary source of fuel for them. Let me just make a note of that. Hydrogen. Cars. Call. Leon. Right, good, great, great. So we're, uh, and we're weaving, we're weaving, we're weaving, we're weaving. Uh, yeah, verbal diarrhea. No, it's not verbal diarrhea. That's when you just talk and talk and talk and all that comes out is just shit. When I talk and talk and talk, all that comes out is gold. It's more like uh, verbal alchemy. Uh, or uh, I say a lot of stuff that just makes me feel good to say. Like how great I am and how much all my enemies suck. Makes me all tingly like down there. So I guess you could call it verbal masturbation. It's both of those things like uh, master alchemy or alchemation. Yeah, verbal alchemation, that sounds great. I use that one at my next rally and everyone will be just wowed by it. They won't know what the hell it means, but it's a long word with like a ton of symbols. So those dumbasses will just think I'm even more of a genius than they already do. Besides, most people don't know what the hell I'm talking about at my rallies anyway, myself included. And there's one last thing that's been pissing me off about the fake news media. They've been using a lot of long words that I don't understand. Them and a bunch of commentators online. The most recent one is a uh, para, a para, para, para something. It means that I don't walk the turdage properly. Like I'll say something, but I'll mangle the word. Like I call Snopes the fact-checking website. I called it Snoops. 
I said Charlottetown instead of Charlottesville and stuff like that. Right. Anemic paranoid Asia. That's what it's called. Well, apparently that's a sign of a dementing brain or something. But it's not. It's actually genius, like everything else I do. When it looks like I'm mispronouncing words and getting them mixed up stupid little things, like I'll say Nikki Haley instead of Nancy Pelosi. When that happens, it's not those paranoid Asians, it's sarcasm. The fake news media don't understand sarcasm, it's hilarious. I should probably explain what sarcasm is to anyone reading this who is in the fake news media or is dumb, like my supporters. So sarcasm, see, it's this, uh, it's this thing you do where you say something that isn't what you mean to make it look like the thing you did mean because that's what you really meant. And it gets the point across better somehow, yeah. Basically, what I'm saying is that only a real genius can use it because only a real genius knows what it is. And it's definitely not a sign that I can't pork properly. And the last thing I want to mention is the most important, the most important thing of all, the most important thing ever, crowd sizes. The fake news media keeps on saying that my crowds are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. You know I'm going to say it, so don't let me disappoint you. That is a lie. My crowd sizes only ever get bigger. In fact, quite often they get bigger even weeks after the event is finished. Like I said, there were 50,000 people at Prairie du Chien. Then a week later, I said there were 60,000 people at Prairie du Chien. That rally got bigger just by me saying it. And a full week later, no less. I actually asked some of my people to put a projection together for me of how many people would likely attend my final rally if I were to hold it on November 4th. And the number surprised even me. Are you ready for this? 12 billion? I'm not kidding. My people said that my rallies are increasing exocentrally or something, and that if I held an average of five rallies a week for the next 20 some odd days, by November 4th, I'd have an audience of, let me see here, I wrote this down too, approximately 133% of the world's population. That's pretty damn good, am I right? And I know what people in the fake news media will say, how reliable are those numbers? Let me put it this way. They're calculated by the greatest mathematicians and analysts in the world. I know them all, I know them well, and they all work for me. They're real geniuses, almost as genius as me. These are the people who put together the projections for my truth social stock, which is absolutely killing it at the moment, so they tell me. Apparently, my stock is the greatest, most sought after stock in the entire world right now. It's blowing up NASDAQ and the Dow Jones and all of them. In fact, my people tell me that DJT stock and DJT stock alone is what's propping up the economy right now. Those record highs that the fake news media credit to Biden, those highs are entirely because of my stock. And he gets all the credit. I'd quote you some numbers, but I'd have to get back to you. My people put duct tape across the bottom of my TV screen so that I couldn't see the fake news, Kyron, to protect me from the really hurtful insults they said. But if I ask for the numbers, my people will make them up for me no questions asked. So I'd better do a little weave to tie this whole thing together and wrap up. No problem, it's what I do. I am the weaver. Hell, I should just change my name to Sigourney right now and get it over with. No, I won't do that. Donald J. Trump is just too good of a name. Maybe I'll just add it. Donald J. S. Trump sounds pretty good. I'll do that. But yeah, my rallies, the crowds, the amazingness, at the debate, Kamala said that people should go to my rallies. That was a stupid, stupid, stupid thing to say because people are going to my rallies and they love them. They come to them, they sit there, they die of heat stroke and they stay throughout the whole thing. They're so enraptured by me that even when they leave, they stay. There's never an empty seat in the house. Never. Not at the beginning, not in the middle, not at the end. Not even a week later. All those pictures of the empty seats at my rally, they're AI. And if you don't know what AI stands for, you're asking the right person, the genius weaver. It stands for AstroTurf installation, and with it, even football stadium groundskeepers can just make stuff up. Hence the name. Know those seats? Those empty seats? They're not actually empty. They just have people in them who are dressed up to look like seats. I do it to make JD Pants happy. My rally crew hands out the costumes to random people. They told me all about it. You know, like the way we hand out auto workers for Trump t-shirts to people who don't even know what a car is. And firefighters for Trump t-shirts to people who struggle to lift a quart of milk, much less are able to haul a body out of a burning building. 
and Teamsters for Trump shirts to people who the closest they've ever been to a truck is when they watched Smokey and the Bandit once. We do that kind of stuff all the time. Like when we had the RNC convention and I was wearing that sanitary towel on my ear. So we handed out sanitary towels to a bunch of people and had them wear them on their ears. And when I was being prosecuted in court and I handed out identical blue suits and red ties to all of my supporters so they'd look just like me. So yeah, those empty seats you're seeing with your big fat lying eyes, they're not empty seats. Don't believe your eyes. Don't believe your ears. And for God's sake, don't believe the fake news media. Please. Donald J.S. Trump. But I'm a foul-mouthed, black-hearted, vicious, venomous turd, so I started sneaking in a few hells here and there. Oh. 